So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create our own simple neural network using TensorFlow to recognize handwritten digits. This is a pretty classic problem in machine learning and it's probably one of the first things most people learn how to do. So to get started in this video, we need a data set full of digits that we can use to train our neural network to recognize new digits. There's a popular data set specifically used for this called MNIST. It has a lot of images and labels associated with each one. So this is a five, this is a zero, this is a four. So to get started with this video, the first thing we need to do is download TensorFlow. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a virtual environment. So this creates us an environment that just contains the Python standard library. And we activate our environment by calling source env bin activate. So we install TensorFlow by saying pip3 install TensorFlow. So now that we've installed TensorFlow, we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import TensorFlow. I'm also gonna import NumPy because TensorFlow uses NumPy to represent its data internally. And now what I'm gonna do is load in the MNIST dataset. So I just paste in this. This command loads in the MNIST dataset because it comes with TensorFlow. We can download it off the internet if we want. We can just go down here and we can download it, but it won't be in the correct format. So it's just much easier to use the built-in TensorFlow version. Next, we wanna load our training data and our test data. So we wanna use two tuples for that. So I'm gonna set training data and training labels. And then I'm gonna set test data and test labels equals mnist.load data. This is gonna download the mnist data off the internet for us. Now we're gonna paste in the code that actually creates our neural network. So a neural network is just a model. So we're calling it model. When we're using this special sequential function because sequential in TensorFlow is what we use to create lots of layers. And a neural network is just lots of layers stacked together and the data flows between them. So inside sequential, we create all the layers that make up our neural network. So the first layer is the input layer and the input layer is going to hold all of the pixel values from our data set. So all of the images in our data set are 28 by 28 pixels. So we take our 28 by 28 pixel images and we flatten them. So instead of being a square that's 28 by 28, it just becomes one big straight line. And that is the first layer in our neural network. So it just looks like this as you see on the screen. Next we have our first hidden layer. So our network's really simple, so we're only gonna include one hidden layer. If we add lots of hidden layers, we can overfit the network to the training data, which means that the network's really good at recognizing the training data, but it's not gonna be so good at recognizing real data, which is the whole point of the network in the first place. So our hidden layer has 128 nodes. So we've 780 nodes on the first layer, going down to 128 in the second layer. And when data hits every node, we run an activation function. And the activation function we're using is called ReLU. There's lots of activation functions we can use, but we just want a function that takes its input, whatever it is, and it squishes it into a value between zero and one. And then finally, we have our output layer. So because we're only recognizing digits, we only need 10 output neurons. So we have 700 nodes on the first layer, 128 on the second, and we have 10 on the output layer because we have 10 possible outputs. And this last bit is the bit that actually builds the neural network. It's just a function where we decide our optimizer, our loss function, and then we decide the metric upon which we train our network. So how our network knows it's getting better is we are checking the accuracy of its predictions. And I should have mentioned the activation function on the output layer is called softmax. We could have chosen ReLU, but it would have given us weird results. We could have used ReLU, but our network wouldn't have been as accurate. The output layer is gonna have 10 probabilities, one for each of our outputs. And the probability just says how confident the network is that that's the correct answer. If we use ReLU, we could get some probabilities that are 60, some that are 50, some that are 40. And overall, the sum of the probabilities would be greater than one. And that doesn't make any sense. So by using softmax, the 10 probabilities that we get are all gonna sum to one. So we can simply just pick the biggest probability. And that is our guess for that digit. So if I run this, that is our network ready to go. That's the network in TensorFlow, but it hasn't been trained yet. It's gonna have a really, really low accuracy. So now we're gonna train the network. So to do that, we say model.fit and we pass it our training data and we pass it the labels for the training data. So the training data is the pixel data. Then training labels are the labels for that data. So for example, the first item in the training data might be a five and the label for that is just gonna say five. So the network knows what the digit is supposed to be. So we pass the training data, the labels, and then we say epochs 
and we set that equal to how many times we want the network to train itself. So I'm going to say it's going to do that five times. So if we run this now, you can see the accuracy increases as the network gets trained. The first time it runs, the accuracy is 28%, then it's 41%, then it's 44 and you can see it goes all the way up. But that's not very accurate, that's still less than 50%. So the reason for that is because our training data just contains ones and zeros. If we look at the pixel data, we can see there are fuzzy edges around each of the images because the fuzzy edges are to smooth out the images. So there are different values of pixels in this image. What we can do is convert all of our training and test data into floating point numbers and we can scale it to values between zero and one. So if I divide all the data by 255, that's the maximum value for a pixel. And now when we train our network, you can see the accuracy is all the way up at 96% currently. And now you can see our network finished with an accuracy of 98.6% on the training data. So now we're going to find out how good our model is on data it's never seen before. That's what we use our test data for. So if we run this, you can see on the test data our model was 97.7% accurate. And finally we can test on a random piece of our test data using this code here. So we use model.predict on the test data to make predictions for all of the test data. And here what we're doing is printing out the test label and the prediction. So we can see whether or not our model predicted correctly. So if I run that, you can see that this symbol is a seven and this is the output of our model. It's got 10 outputs and each output is how confident the network believes that this is the answer. So this is for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and you can see for seven it's 99.98 percent confident that the digit is a seven so that's our network working in practice so hopefully this video was interesting all the code will be up on the high code github page but that's it for this video don't forget to like comment favor and subscribe don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter and reddit for more but that's it for this video and i'll see you next time